me is beautiful movement or beautiful meaning or beautiful visuals or beautiful colour. And it's ironic because, uh, yes, I am partially sighted, but I still really respect something that looks visually beautiful. I have Hallerman Strife syndrome. It's a rare syndrome and there's not much research around it. Um, I was told, and I did see on Wikipedia, that there are only 200 people in the world with it, but I suspect there's more, but, but people aren't diagnosed. At the end of the day, um, it means I have a short stature, it means my hair is a bit more um, wispy, it means that I have um, limited eyesight, um, but other than that, I'm actually quite healthy. Today I'm off to get some photos done uh, for my profile, for my agency website, because I'm really interested in getting into more acting roles and I need better headshots. Uh, I get a bit nervous about my photos being taken because I really care about my image and I'm really interested to know how the photographer will either edit or not edit my image and my face when she takes the photos. visual world I see hair commercials everywhere so image is important and so for me I'm choosing to balance my conscious representation of myself as well as actually not really caring about what people think about my difference. Lots of doctors have said to me you know you could get a free wig or have you thought about that so I think of myself as a human but I was going through the system that thought of me as, as a research object or something to fix. Kia ora, I'm Sarah. I'm Sarah. The idea was to have some um, face shots for an acting agency. Yeah. And then if there's time... I do place. circus performance, so I do acrobatics, aerials, hula hoops, angle grinding and fire eating and a little bit of contortion. Uh, and then I do um, children's theatre stuff and some performance art stuff and a little bit of poetry. And a little bit of writing as well. <laughs> Are you going to give these to an agent? Or... Yeah, I currently have an agent and I currently have some photos up on there but I think it's always nice to have current photos and um, yeah, photos that are well done. So right. I was thinking one with glasses and one without glasses. Yeah. Really? Awesome. Yes. Good. Thank you. Sorry. It did feel like I was an object of curiosity growing up. It felt like I was always monitored and sometimes it felt quite invasive. Okay, and moving around a little bit more. Right. Right. I just need you to be a little bit descriptive about where I'm placing my body because of my eyesight, I struggle to f um, see what looks good. So if I'm leaning too far forward, if my shoulders are too rolled, um, that would be really helpful. Yeah. I had growth hormone yeah, injections when I was really, I uh, around 11 so I and just, I found that a bit strange because I don't see height as a pathological disorder. But it was when I was talking to the doctors about the growth hormone injections that I started to realise that I had certain thoughts around my syndrome and being labelled as a person with a disability. I really didn't think of myself as much different. I just don't have a lot of time for people who judge me in a way that isn't useful. And if I can't enter a conversation with someone to change that judgment, then in many ways I'm not really interested. When someone meets me, I often find that um, they have a judgment surrounding intellect or age when it comes to me. Because uh, of what I look like, they often think I'm, I have less intellect than I have, or that I'm a lot younger, or even a lot older. I think going through a special education unit in schooling segregates you a little bit. And I think looking a little bit different might have led to a little bit of different kind of treatment. I know I sometimes got mistaken as a boy, for example, because of my short hair. But on the flip side, 
because of my partial sight, I kind of didn't notice a lot of different kind of treatment as well. Yeah, these photos are good. There's lots of different angles of my face and you can see my eyes clearly, especially in the shots without the glasses. Um, and I think they show my, my character, my personality. This one, I think there's a nice neckline. I think you can see my eyes through the glasses um, and it's a more natural smile maybe than the others. In a headshot, it's important to show a range of emotion. And so these capture that. And this one I like as well, because it's, it's quite soft. It's a soft kind of image. And I like my hoop earrings. <laughs> In that. I'm pursuing a dream of becoming an actor and a performer without a traditional acting degree, a traditional acting background. So for me it is about skill acquisition and it is about the promotion and the marketing. It's about getting the headshots, it's about networking, knowing the right people, it's about going to an audition, having a great sense of play and commitment and nailing it. Yeah, if you can jump in here it would end up. Oh, yeah. I'll show you what As a creative person, you live your life wanting to create. So you put in so many hours trying to work on projects that you really want to realise, you want to see happen. So there's a lot of unpaid work involved, writing funding proposals, producing things, doing really performance art stuff that might not be well paid or, or might not be paid at all. We're currently working on a proposal for a short film, a grant application. Um, for a short film for the Film Commission. So I'm doing the budget um, as producer and Edward is assistant um, producer and Campbell is director. So they're looking at the script the stuff at the moment. No... She's also, um, I guess she's a little bitchy. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sophie. No, no. Or <laughs> Yeah, it would be nice to kind of get that in there at the beginning to, to um, use yeah. it to kind of show that aspect of Sophie's character. Through <laughs> creating the script for this film, we've worked closely as a team and we've all put personal input into the script. So for me, drawing on my own personal experiences, the character has strived all her life to be normal and to be, um, and to achieve as a person with a disability, as a woman with a disability. And then she comes to that point of like, okay, I've tried this, this normal thing. Is this what I really want? What do I really want? Now your character is perfect. Oh, I quite like that um, me looking over the, looking over the shoulder. Way. Well, I guess she's yeah. never broken up with somebody and she's, um, she says in the script she's never broken up with somebody. She cannot, she's not a confrontational character. So that she kind of finds it difficult to, to act or commit to move on. And so it's finding the courage to actually make a decision and, and finding the reasons and the motivations to, to realise what it is she truly wants. It's like an anti-love story in a way. It's an anti-love story. <laughs> <laughs> My work will um, be far and few between. And I know that. I know I'm a niche market. I'm not deluded about how difficult it's going to be. 90% of decision making people in the film industry will look at me and go, yep, um, we don't want her. The box tightens its grip. The fox chases the headlights with nowhere to hide. My performance is a bow with diamond strings. A harp plays a political lullaby. The lullaby, my voice. The voice you're so desperate to hear, amongst the Botox, amongst the fear. Aiming for grace, like albatrosses gliding. Blindly and bluntly I share, convinced of my convictions. Open to everything that appears, hire me as I hire you. And my career, my gold. 
and this hurdle and this screaming with the souls of the diverse. I don't earn a lot of money and that's just a given. You know, when you want to become an artist, when you are an artist, when you are even a professional circus performer, um, you're lucky if you can get the corporate work. I think being a unique artist means that you're constantly needing to be brave about looking the world in the face, the bits that you agree with, the bits that you don't agree with, and constantly reflecting on the nature of humanity because there are um, really unfair practices that happen. And so emotionally and mentally for me, I've come to that point of being real conscious about how the world works and especially how my industry works. So I think there's a beam here. Yep. So I reckon probably okay. here okay. and then maybe the echo here, I'm not sure. Yeah, it yeah I always meant it on that side for some reason, but it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. The physical theatre piece that we do is called Folly and we're trying to explore um, how blindness relates to insight. I'm partially sighted and I do aerials and that brings up certain images and connotations for people. People get surprised at um, how capable I am when I do my aerials and other performances but people have this assumption of fragility or um, danger and, and pity. Do you want to have a look and see what that beam's like? I don't know if it's a rigging beam or not. Is it metal? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, cool. I like to rig my own gear um, because it is my life on my aerials equipment. And um, so I know what I'm doing. And so I like to check it for myself, especially because I use feeling more so rather than sight to check my rigging. So, um, and you know, I'm able to do my own rigging, so it's important to me. Then I know it's totally set. I know it's exactly where I want it. And um, that makes me feel secure. are usually masochists. You either like the pain of a bar or you like the pain of the fabric cutting into your skin. You know, it's about the risk taking, it's about the strength, it's about the physical movement. It takes a lot of training, we train every day, so it is like a sport in that sense. It's, it's a regime, it is something that you work on because it is a physical art form. And so it is important to keep in shape and it's important to uh, be strong, I guess. You're holding your own weight in the air. We wanted to use blindfolds in our acrobatics because it fit our concept. Uh, so there's a reason behind it. We also wanted to use it because it's one of my strengths. I don't actually need my vision to do acrobatics. A lot of people are afraid of heights and um, a lot of people are petrified of doing aerials and doing the fire eating. But I think that with my vision, I don't really have those fears. I don't have that fear. I know that I'm high up when I'm doing <laughs> the aerials, but I don't really see the audience. Down. Down. Okay. Wait. Strong arms. Well, you connect with okay. the audience and you gaze outwards Sorry. and it's really important to be yeah. aware of that. But I think in my particular situation, having that limited sight actually offers an ability for me to tap into my feeling and draw energy from within to give outwards. Um, the, the trust I have for Edward is really important because he's my base and I'm holding, he's holding me up. Um, 
Edward's got my life in his hands, so I need to trust. I need to trust him. But I often I think, sense. well, who is genuine and who is not genuine? And then having the layer of partial sight, sometimes I, don't, I miss the visual cues that are trust building cues. So I often, when I talk to people, I try and assess whether I can trust them or not. I'll be extra sensitive perhaps to people who are ingenuine. When I first met you, I remember um, you were going on stage to do uh, monologues and you were demanding that everybody do your eyebrows and nobody wanted to do them. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and no one would because no they're all too scared to help me with my makeup. <laughs> you had eyebrow issues. <laughs> so I had eyebrow issues. And then you were like, do I was questioning my, makeup. my image. Did I draw the one anyway? I think um, I made you, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh my god, I do, where do they go? What do, what do I do with the eyebrows? Yeah. That's too much. It's really important for me to, because I'm the one creating my own art, so it's important for me to have a handle on how my face is going to look mm. as well. And the things that I um, have a bit more difficulty to do, I really appreciate your help with, you know? Yeah. He paints me wearing body paints. I'm sketched in birthday suits. Clothes fall off the hanging trapeze. I say, what have I to lose? I love my skin and I love my face. It's like the Mona Lisa. Eyebrows off, lashes gone. With my stare, I dare to be her. Ladies of beauty, industries of lust, the sacrifice of no shapely frames. The gates to the windows of a soul. Not there, yet does it matter? It's not actually my eyesight that causes people to uh, judge me in a certain way. It's what I look like, that's not my problem, but at the same time, it is because it changes the options I have in life or the opportunities I have. I still get really tired of the same old, same old about judgment and who makes the decisions and how people conceive of me. But at the end of the day, I can only move forward and I can only be pragmatic and get to where I want to be if I'm just rational. time out on my own and um, to get my own space and I'm also quite a social person so I do actually like going out to K Road and just walking around at night time um, yeah just just to be out you know just to be relaxed and not working and not constantly thinking about work about the burlesque that I've been involved with and the performances that I like to create is um, expressing that sense of empowerment. I think often people get types of burlesque quite confused because there's a traditional notion of that it's close to striptease and that's not the sort of stuff that I'm wanting to portray. I'm much more interested in power dynamics between men and women or between people in general and to do that in an entertaining kind of way. One of the things I'm interested in exploring, and this is particularly through my angle grinding uh, performances, actually, uh, I have a performance with a, a, a tall guy where the notion of me as uh, the disempowered housewife or the innocent and then the transformation of that 
to actually having the personal power and not being what was otherwise perceived. Being cast in a role because of my look is on the one hand affirming but on the other hand actually quite confronting. I remember thinking through this earlier this year when I got a role based purely on my look and for me I was so thankful for the role uh, but at the same time I had thoughts of well actually I'm, I look quite differently, why are you using my image, for what purpose, and what is it serving? I'm the lead in Harry McClary, and that's really exciting for me, because it's such an iconic story. And I'm working with Tim Bray Productions, which is a really awesome company. And so I'm, I'm quite excited about, um, yeah, playing the lead dog. A blusterous, gusterous, dusterous day. But Harry McCleary was ready to play. He scooped up his skimmer and carried it down to the edge of the park at the far end of town. Well, we had two days of auditions for Harry McCleary and all the characters. I mean, it was a, it's a big cast, as you can see. Um, but Sarah walked in and she in, instant, it was literally instantly engaging. I'm kind of a fan of her live performance work and her burlesque stuff, so I knew what her physical ability was and I just thought, perfect, because she could bring um, a little bit more than probably the everyday actor or performer could with her upper body strength and you know you can see it in the little mannerisms she's created in Harry that he can do these little handstands at drop of a hat where most of us are struggling to be on all fours. He waited for someone to stop and to play. And it's really, really great actually because Linda, our movement coach, she's been, um, she's been really focused on drawing out my strengths and drawing out how, I'm, as I'm playing a, a little terrier, a lot of times the little terriers are often coming really close up to things, which is what I do naturally with my eyesight. So it's actually really um, a good role for me. <laughs> so you know how you were going back to, it was a um, smaller stride and just pick them up more and just make it springier yep. so you're in the air more than you're on the ground. Yep. So just yep. in your head, just be in And the when air. you get the hat, really get the growl. As if you're savaging the hat. <laughs> and the other thing is when you when you do your little lie down, bring your fingers together. So you just got oh, yeah. that kind oh, yeah, of I was wondering in hat tricks um, whether to sit or lie down when I'm watching Grandmother Pew. We'll work that. We've still got weird yeah. that's but still not working. So. A lot of people think, well good on you for doing it, well done. That's not enough for me. I'm like, no, actually, this is my profession. I'm doing it because I love it. I'm doing it because I'm creative. And now I want to do it better, like any other artist. But often there's that feeling of like, oh, no, it's just OK. You're just, you're doing it. It's cool. But no, I want to have good form. And I want to have a good performance because that's professionalism. Put in hours of practice, you know, and hours of creative development time to get that time on stage that might be paid or might be unpaid. That's just the life of the artist, I guess. I get so nervous before stepping out on that stage, actually, because I do think about um, how I present myself. I'm focusing on having enough energy on stage and enjoying it and finding moments of play. I 
think the most attractive thing for me about being on stage is to be able to communicate a creative idea um, and express myself to an audience. A little bit of magic, a little bit of style. When you're on stage, I don't think there's any room for focusing on self-consciousness or judgement. I think it's just doing the job, being inside the moment, being inside your character's world and doing and really committing to that moment and doing the best job that you can. <laughs> I really like creating performances and being part of projects where I can show what I'm thinking and I guess carry a message or a theme in my performance work. I think I'm beautiful, I think I have a right to be on stage and um, I think I add something quite special to any performance.